How can you, as an association executive, work to overcome the challenges and frustrations associated with adopting generative AI? This is a crucial question because increasingly associations are adopting generative AI for member services and various other functions, but there are serious and some unique challenges that come due to the specific aspects of associations, of what it involves in member services and meeting planning and other areas. We do see serious resistance to the changes associated with generative AI adoption, to data privacy concerns. So what you really need to think about is how to align AI adoption with the mission of the association. Let's start with resistance to change. The staff of the association, I've seen when working with a number of associations, there are fears of job displacement. So that causes significant resistance among staff. And there are increasing amounts of headlines around layoffs at associations and other organizations around adopting generative AI layoffs or not hiring people, but including layoffs. So generative AI, we need to be honest, they can certainly automate tasks and make some people less necessary. At the same time, they can augment human capabilities. So you need to really focus as a leader on the strategic value that AI creates. And if you don't intend to lay off people, you need to be very transparent and clear about that. If you do intend to possibly lay off people, you also need to be transparent and clear about that. So what you want to talk about, the crucial thing is transparency and clarity. And what I advise association leaders to do is to focus on how, hey, we're not going to lay off anyone who learns how to use generative AI. The thing that can happen is that if you are not able to learn how to use generative AI, then there's a possibility that you might be laid off. So having these conversations and being honest and transparent is quite helpful for getting over staff anxieties. Now, you also want to talk about the kind of things that generative AI enables, because generative AI enables a focus on strategic and creative tasks, not the kind of more routine work that really it would be great if generative AI can automate. So AI, according to studies, shows... The studies show that the AI can improve efficiency, they can improve output, effectiveness, quick pace, lots of good things there. And that can allow associations to provide better services, more effective services, more customized services for their members. So you'll have enhanced member engagement and advocacy efforts, and you can personalize your member services. That's a key benefit of using generative AI. Now, a challenge is, of course, is that many staff are not familiar with the potential benefits that generative AI can bring. They're just anxious about it. They're worried about it. They don't know about its benefits. And many associations have limited tech budgets, so that can impair their ability to train their team members on generative AI. And that's a really wise area to invest into. So you need to have targeted education and investment into training on how to use generative AI tools effectively. So focus on building those internal skills inside your association for using generative AI. I can guarantee to you that there are already a number of of your staff members who are using it. So get their best practices out. Have them share about what they're doing with generative AI and that will be helpful for everybody else. Another challenge I see with associations is a focus on of their out systems are outdated. So when they're focusing on integrating generative AI, it may not integrate very well with those legacy systems that were not designed to integrate with generative AI effectively. So that can cause a lot of tensions with using outdated legacy systems together with generative AI. So I recommend a wholesale technology stack integration and refinement upgrading when you're adopting generative AI effectively. Another thing to think about, of course, is data privacy. So you're handling sensitive data from your members. 
and members will be concerned about generative AI use. So you want to make sure that your generative AI use is informed by data privacy risks because data breaches can certainly damage reputation and trust. So you need good robust security measures with good auditing, including collaboration on cybersecurity. So AI systems can introduce new vulnerabilities in the cybersecurity realm. So that is something to really be thinking about. So you want to update your cybersecurity protocols and make sure your members, the members of your association, as well as your staff members, know well about the kind of cybersecurity risks brought by generative AI and how you can address them. So here's something to think about in terms of risks. Another area of risks is that AI can perpetuate existing biases from historical data. So when you use your internal database of membership resources to train generative AI, if there's some historical bias there, and I know a number of associations have issues with, let's say tech associations have a tendency to be too male heavy and maybe too white heavy. And so that can really be a problem if you don't account for these historical biases in the training data that you provide to generative AI. So you want to monitor generative AI outputs for these potential areas of bias, which of course you need to customize to your specific demographic profile. So thinking about ethical considerations as well as risks, you need to think about what are the impacts of integrating generative AI on your members and on society more broadly, on how you can make sure that AI is aligned with human values. In the long term, there are some concerns about misalignment of generative AI with human values and how generative AI can essentially displace humanity in its decision making and that is not a good thing. So you want to make sure that the way that you use generative AI is aligned with ethical frameworks and that you're also advocating for effective use of generative AI in society more broadly. And you want to maintain the human touch because automation, too much use of generative AI, of course, generative AI is very helpful for customer service, for member service, but you also want to make sure that members don't feel impersonal, that there's still a human touch, that members feel that there's a personalization, customization, and outreach by real human beings. So make sure to balance between the needs of efficiency and effectiveness and personalized member engagement by real human beings. So have the AI tailor effective responses and customized commentary for your members but make sure that there's follow-up with actual human beings who provide that human touch. Now, as an executive at an association, overall, what you should be thinking about is how to understand and address specific generative AI adoption hurdles, align the adoption of generative AI with your organizational mission and the needs of your membership, implement targeted strategies for smooth integration and training, and regularly assess the risks that AI can pose, then of course you want to measure the kind of integration that you're doing on generative AI and evaluate its effectiveness over time as you're integrating it. Remember, generative AI offers both opportunities and challenges and you wanna make sure that it's really aligned with your association's values and the needs of your membership. And so that is how you'll drive value for your members and innovation in how you serve them and continue relevance for your association in our brave new world.